What are the best exercises for tricep muscle growth according to the science? Well, to understand the answer to that, we first need to understand the anatomy of the triceps. Welcome back to Dr. Milo Wolf, Wolf Coaching. You know the deal. Today, we're talking triceps and exercises. Here's the deal. Triceps means three heads, and therefore, there are three heads in the triceps. Anatomy 101. There's the long head of the triceps, there's the lateral head of the triceps, and there's the medial head of the triceps. As far as their roles within exercises goes, their main role is elbow extension. However, the long head of the triceps also crosses at the shoulder, which allows it to perform shoulder extension. For context, elbow extension looks something like a pushdown or a skull crusher, and shoulder extension looks exactly like a pullover. So, what are the implications of this anatomy? Well, first, if we want to lengthen the triceps overall, we want to be doing the opposite of elbow extension. We want to flex the elbow fully. Number two, if we also want to lengthen the long head even more, we would also want to perform the opposite of shoulder extension, which is shoulder flexion. Number two, if we also want to lengthen the long head of the triceps even more, we want to perform the opposite of its role, aka from shoulder extension to shoulder flexion. So we want to flex the shoulder and flex the elbow and that would maximally lengthen the long head of the triceps. Another implication is that because specifically the long head of the triceps is a biarticular muscle, meaning it crosses both the elbow and the shoulder joint, we don't want to pick exercises where it's being lengthened at one joint while being shortened at another joint. The reason I say that is because we have evidence that biarticular muscles that are being shortened at one joint while being lengthened at another joint during an exercise, that exercise usually doesn't cause much growth. This is the case for the hamstrings during the squat or for the rectus femoris during the squat. And so what we want to avoid is an exercise for the long head where it's not either performing both of its functions at once, like for example, a dumbbell skull over where it's doing both shoulder extension and elbow extensions at the same time, where it's being shortened at both joints and lengthened at both joints at the same time, or an exercise where it's only performing one of those functions in isolation. An exercise where it lengthens at one joint and shortens at the other just not as good for hypertrophy, it seems. And so exercises like the JM press, where you're simultaneously flexing the shoulder, but extending the elbow, AKA lengthening the long head at the shoulder while shortening it at the elbow on the concentric, that's not gonna be a great option for long head hypertrophy. Now I hear you saying, okay, Milo, talking all this science stuff and telling me about anatomy. Now I know about the anatomy of the triceps and I know that we want to train the triceps through elbow extension and through potentially shoulder extension. And that's all well and good but I know of a lot of exercises that do that. Which ones should I pick? Not so fast. Let me give you a list of criteria to grade exercises by to tell you how effective they are for muscle hypertrophy. Here's what they are. First, you want to make sure that the exercise you're using is at least reasonably stable. You don't need to go to the extremes with this, but if an exercise is wildly unstable, like for example, you doing overhead extensions on a BOSU ball or something, that wouldn't be ideal for growth. There's been some evidence that it reduces force production, for example, and we want to maximize force production for hypertrophy. Next, whatever exercise you do pick, and this is informed by anatomy, should be targeting the function of the muscle, or at least one of its functions. In this case, that would be elbow extension, or it would be shoulder extension. A good tricep exercise should be limited by tricep strength, not by anything else. And so certain exercises, like for example, the overhead press or most compound exercises really, may not be ideal for tricep development. Another criteria, pretty important one, by which to gauge whether an exercise is good for hypertrophy is how stretch friendly it is. Let me break down for you what that means. Again, this is the area of my PhD, as you well know, there's three components. One, does it put the target muscle into a lengthen or stretch position? If so, that's good for growth, keep it going. Number two, in terms of resistance curve, does it place the target muscle in a position where it has to produce force in that lengthened position? If so, again, double thumbs up. Number three, is the exercise lengthened partial friendly? One of the things we've looked at in the literature as a means to see what range of motion is best for hypertrophy is the idea of a lengthened partial, or essentially doing half reps in the lengthened position. And so across five studies where we've compared a lengthened partial or about half reps in that lengthened position to a full range of motion, in four of these studies, we found better hypertrophy following length and partials. And so if we want to maximize hypertrophy, we probably want to pick exercises where we can safely perform length and partials as an alternative to full range of motion to maximize hypertrophy. The final criteria is an exercise where you sit down versus you stand up. 
generally an exercise where you get to sit down is going to be slightly better by some margin because you're removing the work that non-tricep muscle groups have to do to stabilize you. By removing this work performed by other muscle groups, you might be slightly reducing the fatigue that you incur and thus be able to do more tricep training overall and get bigger, meatier horseshoe triceps. A couple of bonus points for exercise selection that may or may not apply depending on your situation. The first one is how time efficient that exercise is. Certain exercises may be more time efficient than others. For example, stack loaded machines, dumbbell exercises or cable exercises are typically the most time efficient because they don't require you to set up a barbell, load it up and get started, right? That takes a while. And so if you're someone who doesn't have much time to train, you should be picking the exercises where in a given amount of time, you can do the most hard sets with, all else being equal, because that will provide you with more stimulus. The second bonus component would be micro loadability, or essentially how small of an increment can you change the weight by? Something like a barbell typically wins out over exercises like cable exercises or dumbbell exercises on the micro loadability component. An exercise being more micro loadable simply makes it easier to progress week to week in that exercise. However, the reason that this isn't a major component of exercise selection and what makes an exercise good is because you could simply be doing something called a double progression instead, where instead of trying to add weight week to week because the jump is so large, you would simply add reps and add reps and add reps until eventually you feel comfortable in adding weight. Now I hear you saying, all right, big science man, big 6'2", 230 pound freak, I hear you talking, but all this anatomy stuff, all this science around exercise selection, what does it help me if you're not gonna give me the best exercise? Without further ado, let me do just that. Here's what I think is the single best exercise for tricep development. I think the single best exercise for tricep development is the cable overhead extension. Whether you do it seated or standing, seated is probably slightly better, but takes more equipment, so it's up to you. But generally, a cable overhead extension, in my experience, is the best one tricep exercise. And in fact, the overhead extension has been studied in two separate studies now, and directly compared against the pushdown exercise. I'm talking about a study by Stasinaki and colleagues, and a study by Mayo and colleagues. Their methods were reasonably comparable. One of these studies found no difference in hypertrophy between the pushdown exercise and the cable overhead extension. So you might think, eh, why would I do cable overhead extensions then? But the second study has found a benefit in terms of tricep hypertrophy for the cable overhead extension. And overall, the data does support the use of longer muscle length training in your training for hypertrophy. And here's how this applies to your tricep training. By having an overhead position, your arm overhead, the lateral medial head are getting the same stimulus as they usually would, right? Because they only extend the elbow, and so whether your arm is overhead or by your side really doesn't matter as far as muscle length and thus growth stimulus that they get from different exercises. However, by having your shoulder overhead, the one head of the triceps that does cross the shoulder, which is a long head, that one is being more lengthened than it would be during something like a pushdown. And therefore, you're probably going to see more growth by doing something like an overhead extension versus something like a pushdown. And indeed, as I said, the study by Mayo showed more hypertrophy following overhead extensions versus pushdowns. Now you might be asking, why the cable overhead extension over something like a dumbbell overhead extension or a barbell overhead extension? You might also be asking, why the single arm variant? Why not both arms at the same time? Let me answer both of those questions right now. Why do I pick cables? Well, I think with cables, you can typically get deeper than with a dumbbell for sure. With a dumbbell, oftentimes, the sheer size of the dumbbell, I'm sure you'll be doing these with 100 kilograms or more, the sheer size of the dumbbell can get in the way of getting a full stretch on the triceps. The dumbbell will get in the way of your back before you can get a full stretch in your triceps get all the way down. With a barbell, on the other hand, most people in my experience struggle to get as deep as they would with a cable, simply because the position isn't very comfortable. Likewise, the reason I recommend doing the single arm over doing both arms at the same time is because usually this just affords you a little bit more flexibility with your positioning. However, if you want to do a barbell or if you want to do both arms at the same time, be my guest. But overhead extensions in general are probably your single best bet for tricep hypertrophy of the medial, lateral, and long head of the triceps. Let's review the criteria. First, the triceps will definitely be the limiting factor in an overhead extension. There's simply not any other major muscle groups that contribute towards elbow extension. And so the triceps, if you're going to failure, will be pretty close to or at failure. It's also a pretty stable exercise, stable enough for our purposes anyways. If you wanna make it more stable, consider sitting down or something like that. It's also very stretch friendly. Right? First, it's very length and partial friendly. You can simply end the rep whenever your hand or the cable reaches just above your head or your elbow reaches about a 90 degree angle. 
It puts plenty of tension in that bottom position on the triceps. And finally, by having the arm overhead, you are lengthening the triceps as much as possible. And finally, by targeting elbow extension, which as I mentioned earlier, is the main function of the triceps, this does a great job. Now I hear you saying, Milo, I don't just want to do overhead extensions in my training. What are you, crazy? First of all, maybe. Secondly, I would say, honestly, if you did 50 to 75% or so of your volume as overhead extensions for your triceps, I wouldn't bat an eye. And I think that might be the best approach. However, for some variation, whether it's for enjoyment or for potentially rounding out your exercise selection, I think that skull crushers are generally a better idea versus something like a pushdown. For the same principle I just mentioned, the more flexed your arm is, the longer the length of the long head. And so I think both skull crushers or skull overs, where you actually perform both of the functions of the long head by doing both shoulder extension and elbow extension at the same time, are good alternatives or add-ons to your overhead extensions. Specifically, I would urge you to consider lengthened partials on skull crushers as well. By simply doing half the rep in the lengthened position, and we've actually looked at this in a study by Godo and colleagues, you may get more hypertrophy. In comparing a somewhat lengthened partial, they weren't just going from a full stretch to halfway up, but they were somewhat more on the lengthened side of things, to a four range of motion skull crusher, they found more hypertrophy when simply doing the lengthened portion. Alternatively, if you wanted to work in some compound exercises specifically for your triceps, I think things like push-ups or dips are fine. As I mentioned earlier, I don't think compounds are the best option for overall tricep hypertrophy because you're lengthening the long head at one joint while shortening it at the other. As I mentioned, not great. However, for the lateral and medial head of the triceps, compounds are just fine. And some compounds can actually lead to pretty long muscle lengths for the lateral and medial head. There is still the concern of, hey, is my tricep actually gonna give out first? Or am I my chest give out first or front delts? But the push-up, with a deficit especially, and the dip are great options for fully lengthening the medial and lateral head of the triceps and decent options for hypertrophy. Not the best, but decent. As a final takeaway, generally consider this. The more flexed your shoulder is for tricep isolation exercises, overall, likely the better, specifically for a long head, and thus for overall hypertrophy. So an overhead extension will be slightly better for hypertrophy than something like a skull crusher. In turn, a skull crusher will be slightly better for hypertrophy than something like a pushdown. Just consider this in your exercise selection and bias most of your tricep training to being overhead or as skull crushers. That's the video. If you enjoyed this information crammed, packed video, please leave a comment down below letting me know if there are any other muscle groups you want to see me break down the best exercises for according to the science. It's raining outside, I'm about to go train and get you boys some B-roll. But in the meantime, please comment, like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in that next one. Peace. I swear to God I had two batteries though. That's the one annoying thing. Fuck me man. I just wanted two batteries. All right.